Auditing, it's not just a buzzword. It's the backbone of any secure, compliant, and efficient software application. Without it, companies are flying blind, risking everything from security breaches to financial losses. With that said, do you know what built-in tools PeopleSoft provided to audit your data? What are the pros and cons associated with these tools? If not, you are at the right place. I am Siva Koya. By the end of this episode, you will be able to answer these crucial questions so that you can choose the right audit tool for your requirement. If you are ready, let's step into the audit world of PeopleSoft. At a high level, PeopleSoft provides us four main options to enable auditing on our data. Those are field level auditing, record level auditing, database level auditing, and through financials audit framework. That's not all. PeopleSoft also has built in tools for tracking who is logging in and out, seeing who is currently online, monitoring failed login attempts. I will also show you where to find this data in this tutorial series. All right, folks, now is the time to get our hands dirty and configure these audit options one by one. Let's start with field level auditing. Field level auditing allows you to track changes to specific field values. For instance, if you enable field level auditing on supplier status field, when someone updates the supplier status, you can find out who made the change, when the change occurred, and what was the previous status. We can enable field level auditing on any field that's on a page. Since I mentioned about an example on supplier status field, why don't we go ahead and enable field level auditing on supplier status field. Configuring field level auditing is the simplest among all other auditing options. The very first step to enable field level auditing is to press Ctrl Shift J to find the page name. I will copy the page name. After copying the page name, I will fire up my app designer and then open the page in app designer. Then I will select the specific field on which I want to enable field level auditing. In our case, it's supplier status. I will select that field, right click, I will click on view definition. Then double click on vendor status field. Under record field properties, we will find a audit section where we can select one of these audit options which are self-explanatory. In our case, field change is more appropriate. Let's go ahead and enable that. That's it guys. This is how easy it is to enable field level auditing. I will go ahead, click OK and save my changes. Once the field level audit configuration is done, if someone makes any changes to the supplier status field, all the audit data corresponding to that change is captured in a couple of delivered tables. Let's go ahead and test a change and see how it all plays out. I logged in as VP1 user and accessed the supplier ending with 046. Current status of the supplier is unapproved. I'll go ahead and approve the supplier. I'll save my changes. Now I will go behind the scenes and show you the audit data corresponding to the change that we just did. To save us some time, I already put together SQL statements that you see on my PL SQL developer. Field level audit data is captured in two main tables, PS audit and PS audit text. I am filtering the audit rows using a where clause to display only those audit results corresponding to the field we configured. So if I query the data, here you can see the audit data, who modified it, when it was modified, what was the audit action, what is the table name, field name, what are the key values for the record that we modified, what is the old value before the change was made. In our case, E, E means unapproved. Likewise, what is the new value after the change was made, A means approved. If I query PS audit text, similar data exists. The only reason PS audit text table exists is to capture the old and new values which are greater than 65 characters of length. Because if you check PS audit table, there is a character limitation on old and new values which should be less than 65 characters. Now let's talk about pros and cons with field level auditing. Starting with good stuff, as you saw, 
it is super easy to set up. The best part is People Tools provides detailed audit logging out of the box. Speaking about downsides with field level auditing, even though configuring field level auditing is a small change, it is technically a customization, which means we have to invest effort in maintaining this change during upgrades to ensure it is part of the system. The other key drawback is not all changes to the field are captured in audit logging, especially when changes are made through SQL scripts or using third party processes such as COBOL or SQR. Field level auditing is great, but it is not always efficient. Let's say you want to enable auditing on four different fields that belong to the same record. In field level auditing, four separate audit entries are created, one for each field change. It doesn't sound efficient, is it? That's when record level auditing comes into play. Instead of tracking changes to the individual fields, we can track all the changes done to the record at once using record level auditing. Therefore, in our example, there will be a single audit entry that captures all the changes made to the four fields. Let me stop talking. It's time to show you how to enable record level auditing. As you can see, I am on distribution code page. The requirement is whenever a user comes here and updates any of the chart fields here, those changes should be captured using record level auditing. The first step is to identify the record name behind these chart fields. I'll start by pressing Ctrl Shift J. Then I'll copy the page name. I'll fire up my app designer and open the page. Then I'll double click on the grid to identify the record name. I will copy the record name and open in app designer. I will click on record properties, navigate to use tab. And this is where we need to provide our custom audit record name. If there is any existing audit table with the same fields, we can leverage that. For this demo, let's go ahead and create a brand new audit table. Creating audit table is pretty easy. All we need to do is save a copy of your primary table and just keep the fields that you want to audit. Remove the keys on the table and add audit specific fields to the table. Let's go ahead and do that. Let me do the steps one by one. First step to take a copy of this record. I will do file, save as. Audit tables follow a specific naming convention. They should begin with audit underscore. While the rest of the table name can be chosen based on the context, since we are auditing distribution table, I will use DST underscore TBL. I will click OK. I do not wish to save a copy of people code. I will say no. Moving on to the next step. There shouldn't be any unique rows in audit table. So let's go ahead and remove all the keys in the table. I'll click on the keys tab. As I see, there are three keys. I will double click on the first field, remove the keys. I can remove the list box item as well. I will click OK. I will follow the same steps for the rest of the keys. The next step is we need to add three audit specific fields to our table. Let's go ahead and do that. I should add these fields in the beginning of the table. So I selected set ID, insert field, and the first field name is audit underscore OPR ID. We need this field to identify who made the change. Let me drag the audit underscore OPR ID as the first field in the table. Time to add the next field, insert field, audit underscore stamp. This field is used to track when the change was made. We will now add last field to our table. It is audit underscore ACTN. This field is used to track if the data was added, deleted or changed. There you have it guys. I have added all the three required fields to our table. Now I will go ahead and save my changes. Click OK to the warning message. The next step is to remove the fields that we do not intend to audit. Let's not touch the previous keys because we want this field data to uniquely identify the audit row. For the rest of the fields, I will remove the ones that I do not want to audit. I do not want to audit description. I will delete that field. I do not want to audit description short. I will delete that field. I will keep the rest of the fields and save my table. We want audit data to be stored in a physical table so that we can query audit data at later point of time. Therefore, in order to make this record a physical table, we have to build the record. Let's go ahead and do that. 
to build the table i will click on build icon then select create tables make sure you select execute and build script i will click on build button i will click yes to the warning message and clearly you can see our record was successfully built we have now completed all the steps required to create an audit table now let's head back to our main table and use this table in the audit properties i will navigate back to our main table click on properties navigate to use tab under record audit section we need to select the audit table that we just created the last step is we need to select one of these audit options if we select add option what we are saying is whenever a new row is inserted into the main table that row should be audited if we select change what we are saying is if any field visible on the page that belongs to this record is modified that change is audited if we select selective system will only audit the modifications done to the fields that we selected in our audit table in our case this is most appropriate let's go ahead and select this in case of delete if you delete any row in the main table that data is audited i will go ahead and select okay and save my changes that's it folks we just completed record level audit configuration let's go ahead and test our changes i hop down to our peoplesoft application and access one of the existing distribution codes now i will make changes to the chart field combination i'll go ahead and select any fund i'll select department i will make changes to the existing account and save my changes now if i query our custom audit table here we can see the user id who modified our chart field table when the modification was done and what is the audit action and these are the key values for our distribution record unlike field level auditing record level auditing will not track old value and new value it will only capture the old values before the change was made that's why the account value populated here is the old value before we made the change and the rest of the chart fields were not populated because nothing was populated in these fields before the change was made if you want new values we have to query the main table let's quickly weigh in pros and cons of record level auditing the big advantage it's more efficient than field level auditing especially when you want to enable auditing on multiple fields that belong to the same record also it is easy to set up and we can capture detail logging in a custom table now let's talk about downsides record level auditing shares the same drawbacks as field level auditing even though we do not need to build the table when we enable record level auditing the changes we do will be treated as a customization also we have to capture these changes independently when we do upgrades likewise no tracking of direct sql updates or modifications performed by third party application with this i will wrap up this episode in the next episode we will tackle a big challenge that is how to catch those sneaky sql updates that slip past field level and record level auditing stay tuned to the peoplesoft channel thank you so much for watching have a great day